morning. Welcome to Magnolia Lutheran Church. Welcome to my home. My name is Kevin Bates and I serve the good people of Magnolia and the people of Magnolia Lutheran Church. How good it is to gather with you. Um, your bulletin is found on a Facebook uh, link, uh, Facebook page, uh, and you can find a link. And also, uh, for those who are members of the church, there's an email blast that was sent out, and there's a link for that for you to find the bulletin and follow along. Today, the hymn of the day after the sermon uh, has pictures and images of people in our congregation uh, going to church. Uh, and so you'll see that the, after the sermon today. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good and gracious God, gather us in beneath the tent of your love, between, uh, beneath the canopy of your grace. Connect us beyond our separation. And connect us with the mystery of your love. Connect us to our neighbors and connect us to those who are hurting. So that in this time of separation, we also may know the importance of being connected to one another. May we connect with the mystery of your word as we gather and worship this hour. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Holy words, holy wisdom, thanks, thanks be to God. God. The Gospel reading is from the, from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. A disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave to be like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more they will malign those of his household. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. For what I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. And so Jesus is giving this speech, this graduation speech. Well, it's not really a graduation speech, but it's kind of like that. After showing his friends 
what he was to be about. And after teaching them to do the things that he was doing, he finally sends them out two by two to do what he was doing, to teach in the synagogue and proclaim good news outside of it, to cure the sick and raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers and cast out demons. And before he sent them out, Jesus gave them a speech, sort of a graduation speech, but, but not really. It was a speech that began last Sunday. The speech today, we hear the middle of it, and next Sunday we will hear the end of it. We, we never get to hear how this speech went over with his friends. We never get a chance to hear what they thought of it, which made me wonder, what if one or two of them talked with Jesus after the speech and told him what they thought of it? And since I wondered that, I also wondered, what if those who talked to him after the speech were not of his generation, but of our generation? What if we could leap across time? And what if that person speaking to Jesus, I don't know, was a public relations guy from our time who caught up with Jesus after this commissioning speech? I wonder. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I imagine a guy named Sam from our time talking with Jesus after the commissioning speech. That was good. That was good. It, it wasn't your best, but that was good. Jesus looks up, his eyebrows raised. Sam, I mean, it wasn't as good as what you did on that mountain. Oh, that sermon on the mountain. Oh, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Bless, blessed are the peacemakers. You know, that stuff you said on the mountain. Oh, that, that was really good. This was good. And there were some good lines here. There were some real gems. Jesus looking at Sam with his eyebrows still raised. Sam. There's some good parts, like that part you said, um, what I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. That's brilliant. That has staying power. Jesus, lips pressed together, slightly nodding. Sam, or this part, um, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. That's a line that sticks. That has staying power. Jesus, why do I get the feeling you are not telling me everything? Sam, well, that part that you said that the disciple is, is not above the teacher. Jesus, yes. Sam, I mean, I get it. I understand that you are just about ready to send your friends out to do what you've been doing. And it almost seems like you don't want them to get too big for their britches. And they need to remember that they are not in charge of this movement. Jesus. Yes, but I would not have said it that way. But yes. Sam. But that next part. No offense, but that part, that next part is not going to sit very well with a lot of people from my generation. Jesus, eyebrows raised again. Sam, you know that part where you said that a slave is not greater than the master? Jesus, eyebrows raised, lips pressed together. Sam, I mean, no offense, but I think you could have found a better analogy. 
the generation that I come from, well, slavery, the slavery analogy is not going to fly well. I mean, wars have been fought over this. And long after the wars are over, the people are still fighting. Jesus. And you don't think I know that? Sam. I, I mean, no offense, but in the future, in, in my generation, you, you don't want to be compared to the masters. They were the bad guys. And the slaves, I mean, the slaves, they, they were, so many of them were greater than the masters. I mean, they showed more humanity. Jesus' eyebrows raised. Sam, I mean, it's not my place to tell you what you should say and what you shouldn't say, but I just wanted you to know that this part is not going to play well 2,000 years from now in a country that, no offense, you and your buddies don't even know that it exists when you're alive. Jesus. Yes, you are right. Sam. I am? Well, good. I, I, I thought that you would be offended. Jesus, I am. But you are right when you said, it is not your place to tell me what to say. Sam, eyebrows raised. Jesus, why do you people in the future always think you are so much smarter than the people who lived before you? Why do you always think that everything is always just about you? Sam, squirming, feels like he's in trouble, but he's not exactly sure. Jesus. The story that is written about me in your sacred book cannot ever be fully removed from the time in which it was written. Yes, I am found within the words written on the sacred page. And I am so much more than the words written on the sacred page. Sam, eyebrows raised, smart enough to know that this is not a conversation anymore. Jesus, do you really think for a moment that I would condone slavery? Treating another human being as property? Treating a brother or a sister as less than human? As less than yourself? I was sending out my friends to do the work that I was doing. And I knew the risk. And I knew that they were not completely ready. But I also knew that there was going to be a time coming very soon when I would not be with them. And they would have to do this on their own. So this was getting them ready. I was concerned about two things. First, I was concerned that they thought that they were not up to the task. And second, I was concerned that they might think that they were born for this work and that power would get into their heads. And the second is worse than the first. The analogies that I gave made perfect sense to the generation that I lived in. Now, I cannot speak to every generation in every sentence that I speak. Sam, listening. Jesus, there will certainly be times when a teacher is less than helpful. But know this, 
Only the simple-minded student can only learn from wise teachers. A wise student can learn from even the most foolish of teachers. Sam, listening. Jesus. And there will be a time, there will be times when those in uniforms of authority will reactively abuse the power that is given to them. And they will even try to cover it up. And there will be times when those in the tallest of chairs will deliberately mislead for personal gain. In these times, my disciples are to remember who they are and who they follow. Sam, still listening. Jesus, and there will be time when fathers, the fathers who our ancestors of old told us to honor, there will be times when fathers will not act honorably themselves. And they who follow my ways are always called to have a spine and to dare to stand in the light of truth. Sam, this is good stuff. This, this is the stuff that I wanted you to tell your disciples. Jesus, I told my disciples what they needed to hear in the time that they were living. And now I'm telling you the same. My words are unchanging. But those who hear it are. Sam, this is great. But, but give us some nuts and bolts. Tell us what we're to do. Jesus. Teach with inside, inside the sacred walls. Proclaim good news outside of it. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Sam, um, really? Cast out demons? Well, in the future, uh, we, we don't do that anymore. Jesus, I am doing that. I am still doing that in your generation. The demons in your age are legion. Yours is a great nation, as are so many others. And yours is not a nation without sin, as are others. You dared to imagine a land of freedom and equality for all, even as you kept human beings in bondage. So many of your temples to freedom were built by human slaves. You have a past that has treated women as less than men. You have a past where brown and black people are treated less than others. And this past is your original sin. Sam, head down. Yes, I agree. But I'm not a racist like those skinheads or people from the KKK? Jesus. Oh, Sam. As long as the problem is outside of you, the problem will remain. Sam, dare you have the courage 
to see how there is the shadow of a demon in your land even still. A shadow that still pulls the strings. And each has contributed, if only with complicity or silence or turning your back. Dare you come and live life anew? Dare you dream this dream of freedom? Yes, I still cast out demons. And I am calling on you to do the same. Just as I called on my friends to do this so many years ago. Jesus. One of my sheep was named Michael. I think you might have heard of him. He was not perfect, but he was a lovely poet. And oh man, he could sing. My apologies, I don't understand. <laughs> oh, that was a phone talking during the middle of the service there. Jesus said, once Here's one. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is now turning off her phone <laughs> if you could have seen her face right then um, Jesus said once one of my sheep was named Michael I think you might have heard of him he was not perfect but he was a lovely poet and oh my he could sing and he could dance like he was walking on the moon and once he sang I'm standing with a man, I'm starting with a man in the mirror, and I'm asking him to change his ways. No message could ever have been clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look, look at yourself and make the change. Sam. Silence. Jesus. I just love that. Sam. I don't think I can do this by myself. Jesus, I am with you. If you love me and keep my commandments, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and the Father will give you an advocate to be with you forever. This advocate is the Spirit of truth who will abide with you, and he will be in you. And the advocate will teach you beautiful and difficult truths. I'm also giving you this advocate to speak to you through your neighbor so that you may learn from them. I will not leave you orphaned. In a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me because I live in you. You will also live. You may expect me to say, do not let your hearts be troubled, but not this time. This time I will say, go ahead and let your hearts be troubled, but do not be afraid. For you are never too old to be born anew. And remember, I am with you even to the end of the age. We sing together.
Good morning again. Our service continues with a time of confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets can be hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, scripture tells us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful, God who is just, will forgive our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins, as I called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. With thanksgiving for the beauty of your creation, for the call of the birds, for all that swims beneath the surface of the sea, for all that creeps and crawls upon the earth, for the trees that abundantly grow, that we may care for this creation that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For our neighbors those who live to the south and to the north, and those who live to the east and to the west. For our neighbors with whom we share property lines or apartment walls. May we see that there's a reason why these neighbors have come into our lives. And that we may be good neighbors to those for whom we are near. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the neighbors north and the neighbors south, our neighbors in Mexico, Central America and Latin America, our neighbors to the north in Canada, in Greenland and Iceland, to our neighbors to the east and our neighbors to the west, that we may come to know our neighbors even more. That we may enjoy the, the food on their table and come to know the stories of their background. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this country. During this hour, we pray for mending We pray for a courage to be broken. We pray for the resisting of the temptation for making quick fixes. Band-aids on old wounds. By your grace and by your presence, we pray for healing and restoration that we may be one and that dignity and equality and brotherhood and sisterhood and siblings might be shared by all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for your church. Bind us together when we are apart. 
that we may have the courage to care for one another in our times of separateness, and the faith to know that we are connected to you and connected to one another. Make us mindful that the living of this these days will be told in the pages of the generations that come after us. And may we have a story to tell, a resiliency in faith and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. How good it is to gather with you. Welcome to my home. Um, a warm greeting for all those who are fathers and who, are, uh, who give fatherly care. Um, second, um, encouragement to all of us for the living of these days. It's been more than three months now since um, this um, settle in place has happened. And, um, and we can do this. God is with us. We can do this. Um, our church council is deliberately looking at all facts to figure out what is the good way for us to gather together and win. Um, and uh, when those in bits of information are known, we will share this, the, the information with you. Some uh, news in our congregation, uh, William Olden, a um, member of Magnolia Lutheran Church and father of uh, Mike Olden, who Mike is on the church council years ago. Um, William was on the church council and also served as an usher. Um, uh, after his wife died and he remarried, uh, he became part of uh, Our Lady of Fatima Church. But William died this last week. And um, so our hearts to uh, Mike and to Mike's family as um, uh, we enter into the rituals of grief. Uh, second, um, uh, life was born in our congregation. Adriana and Noah welcome the birth of Arthur James Martin, who was born on June 7th. Uh, he's eight pounds and 10 ounces, uh, a big boy. And I guess even in two weeks of his life, he's already growing. And so, uh, and Adriana said that with both delight and a little bit of sadness. It was, and he's growing so much in just the first two weeks. And so we'd give uh, God thanks for this gift of new life. Also, uh, Beth and Linda, how nice it was to see you this week as you popped by. It was great to see you. Um, and also, I, um, there was a coffee hour that happened, will happen right after worship. If, if you are watching this broadcast and you do not have a link, um, send me an email and uh, we'll see if we can get you a link. It's a wonderful time for us to connect. If you haven't dialed into the coffee hour, I really invite and encourage you to do so. It's a great way for us to connect with one another. I've mentioned the Kyrie Eleison. Um, and uh, tell, someone tell me what time it is right now. 38. I will tell you the story about the Kyrie Eleison um, uh, in the, either next week or the next couple of weeks. I just want to be considerate of time. But as for right now, a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.